everyone, it's Dave. Happy long weekend. If you do have a long weekend like I do, if not, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for tuning in as always. Today I want to talk about some exciting potential future contracts that Rocket Lab could be shooting for. These could all end up being quite large, so if any of them do come to fruition, that would be quite exciting for the company and the stock. After all, what better way to start a long weekend than with some wild speculation? If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you are already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider hitting that like button to help out the channel. That's always very much appreciated. And of course, a big special thank you to my channel members who really do help keep the channel going. So thank you guys so much. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into some potential new Rocket Lab Space Systems contracts. First of all, we have an amendment to an existing contract opportunity with the SDA. If you're not familiar with the SDA, Rocket Lab did get that massive 500 plus million dollar contract from them this past year to build out those tranche to transport layer satellites. This contract opportunity was originally for proposals for novel architecture concepts, systems, technologies, and capabilities that enable leap ahead improvements for future tranches of this constellation, capability layers or new capabilities to address emerging or evolving warfighter needs. So they're basically asking the private sector to come up with ideas and offers for how to improve the capabilities of future layers of this massive space defense constellation. Now, the new part is actually down here. This is the amendment. The SDA is now issuing a call for proposals for engineering studies, analysis, and technical trades to support assisted on-demand space vehicle deorbit as a service for their constellation. Potential offers are encouraged to submit proposals by May 30th, 2024. They did attach a call for proposals for details. Uh, went and checked it out here. You're welcome to read through the whole thing. But basically what it comes down to is that although these satellites, if everything goes well with them, do have the capability of deorbiting themselves once they reach their end of life, uh, the SDA would kind of like to have the ability or option to send something up and do the deorbiting if something goes wrong. Quote here says that even though current plans are adequate, the SDA is also interested in commercially available options for assisted disposal services as a contingency should they be required. And the SDA believes several industry partners with concepts and business models um, could support this, but it's not uh in operation yet. So starts off with a study. Obviously you get paid for the study and that's not a big deal. And then you ultimately you would propose how this would work. And then if that proposal were to get accepted and you actually put this into practice, that's when the larger contract would come in. But even getting the study I think is great. And uh, if it would lead to something down the line, like actually going into practice, it would be absolutely massive, of course, because we all know that this is a huge constellation with so many satellites. And if you need the ability to deorbit them, that's developing new technologies and there's a lot on the line there. So the interesting thing about this is, um, Rocket Lab on their Electron actually recently launched a mission that was designed to investigate removing space junk from orbit already. Now, the payload of this mission was not a Rocket Lab satellite. Uh, the Electron launched it for a third party, but you have to be very, very precise with your rocket in order to deliver a payload close enough to a piece of space debris that you could even consider investigating catching it or deorbiting it uh, requires a ton of precision and no small feat that Rocket Lab accomplished on this one. So they already do seem to have at least part of the capabilities that would be needed to deorbit uh, some of these satellites if that were needed for any reason. Of course, they would have to, you know, figure out the payload side of things and how that would work. But at least from the rocket launch side of things, that already appears to be well in hand. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing that makes me think, you know, it could make a lot of sense for Rocket Lab to submit a proposal for this. And if Electron ever did get into the deorbiting 
business, which doesn't really exist yet. That could make a lot of sense for a small vehicle like the Electron that has to get a deorbiter to a very, very specific location to meet up with a piece of space debris or a, piece, or a satellite that's already in orbit. Could make a lot of sense for Electron. Could result in more demand for that vehicle, which would obviously be great as well. Uh, next up, sticking with the SDA, we do have some new Tranche 2 Transport Layer Gamma satellites being announced here. I'm sure you guys aren't all familiar with all these different phrases because even I can't keep it straight. We have Beta, we have Gamma, we have Transport Layers, we have tranches. It's all very confusing to be honest with you, but basically the SDA is seeking industry proposals for the final of three types of tranche two transport layer in brackets T2TL space vehicles, which is gamma. They expect to procure 20 of these Gamma Space vehicles. The Gamma variant will share certain baseline characteristics with the other Tranche 2 transport layer variants, try saying that five times fast, <laughs> um, which are Alpha and Beta, uh, as outlined in the solicitation. Now, if you remember Alpha and Beta, this is actually what Rocket Lab is already building and saying that they share characteristics with these satellites is a very good sign for thinking Rocket Lab would be able to build them as well and may be very interested in bidding on them. Just a quote here from Rocket Lab's original award on the SDA program saying the vendor has received a 550 million prototype agreement to build and operate 18 satellites for Tranche 2 Transport Layer at T2TL, which we did just see in that previous page, uh, aka beta satellites. So very interesting stuff. As we know, they got 515 million for these beta satellites. I believe these Gamma satellites could ultimately go for even more money when they do get awarded. And we're talking 20, which is, you know, more than 18. So obviously could be a very large contract for Rocket Lab if they were to be successful on that. Do remember as well that Adam Spice did say that they will be shooting for more, even larger contracts than that one they already received from the SDA as they continue to grow that space systems business, which is really the backbone of the revenues for the entire company, in my opinion. So this one would perhaps be even more exciting, at least over the short term, than the study for deorbiting those SDA satellites. But I think both could potentially be quite exciting for Rocket Lab, because when you think about it, I mean, there's not too many people out there with rockets who can do that sort of capability regarding deorbiting. Rocket Lab is really one of the few. So deorbiting, I think there's perhaps even less competition than there would be on the building out of the satellites side of things. And then our friend Tim also recently had a very interesting tweet thread. He tends to research these things very well, so I figured I would share this with you as well if you haven't already seen it. Do check out Tim's Twitter, which is at Tim underscore X94. If you're interested in following him, he has some great threads on Rocket Lab and seems to be quite a smart guy. I've got to have Tim on the channel at some point. I'm sure we would have a great conversation. Anyway. So what Tim was saying is that um, thinking about MDA Space, this company we've talked about Rocket Lab working in the past with on Global Star, they have a $2 billion contract from Telesat for developing uh, this constellation called Lightspeed. He says MDA does not have satellite bus capabilities. I'm not too sure about that part, but uh, let's continue on and we'll circle back to that later. So, according to MDA CEO, supplier selection for the light speed program is being finalized according to the Q4 2024 earnings call, which was quite recent. Tweet number two, just talking a little bit about the background of this light speed constellation. I don't think we need to go into detail on this right now. Basically, it's a big ass constellation. <laughs> um, anyway, the CEO of Telesat said the satellites need to have a 11 plus 
year requirement to operate in Leo. This is a lot longer than the industry average of five to seven years. And Rocket Lab does have that capability with their Lightning satellite, which was just newly branded as Lightning, but um, similar to the one that they're building out for Global Star, can live for 12 plus years. In terms of competitors, there isn't too many that advertise an 11 plus year lifetime for their Leo constellation. And he does also think that having solar panels in house would give Rocket Lab an advantage because they can guarantee that very long lead item component. Now he does also mention that newly purchased and retrofitted Virgin Orbit facility, which can significantly expand their capabilities because one of the questions I think a lot of us have with all this is, I mean, this all sounds very exciting, but does Rocket Lab even have the capacity to go after even more massive contracts? Uh, you hear rumors and rumblings from people who work there saying they're just incredibly busy already. So is this something that's feasible? Well, perhaps with that huge Virgin Orbit facility, it would certainly expand their satellite production capabilities. He also says that he thinks the, uh, the size of the satellite for Rocket Lab's Lightning platform would make a lot of sense for this constellation. So um, if that did come to pass, I mean, of course, that could be very exciting. I'm not completely sold on this one yet. I think it would be obviously great for Rocket Lab if it is true. Uh, let's go back to the announcement here. Now, the reason I'm not completely sure about this is that MDA does have this software to find satellites program that they've spooled up. I believe it's in Montreal that they say allows them, will allow them to eventually manufacture up to two satellites per day, which is an extremely high volume. So I think they may actually be able to build the buses themselves with this new platform, although I'm not 100% sure on this. Going to the announcement here, um, this one is where MDA was selected as the prime contractor for this Telesat constellation. Highlighted here, we do have the Telesat Lightspeed satellites will be built, assembled, and tested at MDA's state-of-the-art high-volume satellite manufacturing facilities in Montreal. So when you read that, you think, okay, for sure, if that's the, what they're saying, then it couldn't be being built by Rocket Lab, right? Because it says right here, built by their manufacturing facilities in Montreal, but not so fast because when MDA won the Global Star Award and subcontracted to Rocket Lab, they also had this quote down here, sorry if it's a little bit cut off, but it says the satellites will be built, assembled, and tested at MDA's new state-of-the-art high-volume satellite production facility in Montreal. So even though they subcontracted the buses to Rocket Lab, they were still saying in this Global Star one that they'll be built and assembled in Montreal. So I guess they just consider getting the buses shipped there from Rocket Lab and then assembling it all there, having them built in Montreal. So for that reason, I can't say it would be ruled completely out. So those are the three potential massive contracts that Rocket Lab could be vying for, or at least applying for uh, in the coming months. I do hope they're applying for at least one of them, if not all of them. I think it would be very exciting, even if one of these were achieved by the company. Uh, Telesat is an absolutely massive constellation. I would say that's probably the more long shot one. The other two from the SDA, I would be kind of surprised if Rocket Lab didn't apply for them. The deorbiting one, I think, makes a lot of sense. And the one for building out those gamma satellites also makes a lot of sense because it shares so much in common with the beta satellites that Rocket Lab is already building for that transport layer. Definitely exciting stuff. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. If you have found this interesting, I do hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that like button as well. It's always very helpful. I hope you guys have a great long weekend. Once again, if you do have a long weekend, I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye for now. Thank you.